This is the price training portal video tutorial on user-defined data types. In many cases, we will need to communicate complex data and data structures between processes. In this tutorial, we are going to introduce how a programmer can define new data types in MPI. You may have wondered why most of the communication routines require the data type argument. It tells the MPI library how to interpret a stream of bytes when sending or receiving. For example, the elementary MPI data types such as MPI int or MPI real correspond to language basic types in C or Fortran. The basic inbuilt data types enable communication of contiguous memory sequences of identical elements, for example a full vector or a matrix. Consider however a case where you would like to send only one row of a matrix when writing a Fortran program, which is not contiguous in memory. In passing, we note that this is a completely analogous case to sending a column when programming in C. We could set a series of send operations, sending one element at a time, or we could copy the row into a vector and send that vector instead. The third and the best solution is to generate a new data type that corresponds to a row in a matrix and send that data as it would be a contiguous block. As anticipated, MPI allows us to define new data types to use for the data type argument when inbuilt elementary types do not suffice. Examples of these include a matrix row or some more complex cases like a subblock of a multidimensional array or structs. The motivation for using them include program readability and compactness, but also performance. If a data structure which we need to communicate is non contiguous in memory, defining a known data type for it will outperform simple packing and especially multiple routine calls. The need for defining own data types becomes very pronounced when using MPIIO for disk access of non contiguous data. We can employ the user defined data types in all routines that require a data type argument. In passing, we note that the argument does not have to be the same in both sending and receiving routines, but you are allowed to receive non contiguous data described by a user defined data type into a contiguous block consisting of an appropriate elementary data type, or vice versa. So, how do we use them? We first need to define the type using special routines for data type construction. We will get back to those soon. Then we will need to commit it before we can refer to it. This is accomplished through the MPI type commit routine, having a single input and output argument, which is the handle for the data type from the constructor routines. When we no longer require the type, it is good practice to free the allocation through the MPI type free routine. The possible challenges lie in the constructor routines selecting the correct one and describing the data structure with it. Many of them are available, but we'll just demonstrate the process with only one of them. We will now have a closer look at the data type constructor routine MPI type vector, which creates a type for data consisting of equally separated blocks. By providing the number of blocks, number of elements in each block, the element separation and the type of these elements, the routine will return a handle to the corresponding data type. For example, the picture here describes a data structure consisting of three blocks, each having two elements, and the starting points of the blocks are separated by three elements. Note that nothing prevents the use of nested data types. In other words, the all type argument does not necessarily have to be an elementary data type. Let us return to the previously mentioned case of sending a matrix row when programming Fortran or a matrix column when writing C. The row can be described by MPI type vector. We assume that the matrix row consists of n blocks of one element separated by n-1 elements where n and n are the dimensions of a matrix. By calling MPI type vector with these values, we obtain a handle row type which has to be committed using the routine MPI type commit. Let us use the data type for sending a matrix row with a single MPI send call. Note that the send count is now equal to 1, since the row type describes the whole row, and we are sending a single row. When the data type is no longer required, we can free it using MPI type free. We had a look at one constructor routine, but there are many others. This list picks up the most useful and often encountered constructors. MPI type contiguous sends a piece of contiguous data as a single element. 
MPI type vector was just addressed. MPI type indexed is a more general version of MPI type vector, allowing for varying size blocks and separations. For example, it can be used to describe an upper or lower triangular of a matrix. MPI type create subarray allows for describing a subblock of a multidimensional array. The most generic data type is MPI type create struct, which allows for sending data consisting of multiple data types and dimensions.